Today, we learned the President of the United States urged the head of a foreign power to take action against two Democratic Congresswomen, American Congresswomen, who are critics of his. And the head of that foreign power did just that. And in a truly Trumpian twist, late today, the President denied having pushed the foreign power while also seeming to admit that he had. Bears repeating, this is certainly not normal, except abnormal is kind of now normal. It's also a classic Trump distraction play, a way to turn the media and the public's attention away from yesterday's disastrous stock drop and fears of a recession. So keep that in mind. Nevertheless, it is worth looking at what the president just did here because, as we said, it's unprecedented. So this concerns two congresswomen, Rashida Tlaib and Ilan Omar, who plan to visit Israel. They are, as you know, openly critical of Israeli policy, both support a boycott of Israel and C Congresswoman Omar has been criticized, including by her colleagues, and has since apologized for using anti-Semitic tropes on a number of occasions. And as you may also know, they are two of the four non-white female lawmakers whom the president has been attacking repeatedly. When you see the four Congresswomen, oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> Representative Ilhan Omar, Send her back, which is a racist nativist chant that's been used at one time or another in America against just about every minority group in America. A chant the president there encouraged and soaked in for 13 seconds. But as bad as that was, what the president did today is just simply something that presidents don't do. Using a foreign government to punish members of a co-equal branch of government. I mean, the other way to look at it, which is equally disturbing, is that the president got a foreign country, a close ally of America's, to help him hurt some of his American political opponents, elected members of Congress. That's something that the president's taken oath not to do. They swore to uphold the Constitution, obviously, including the speech or debate clause from Article 1, which reads, in part, for any speech or debate in either house, they, meaning members of Congress, shall not be questioned in any other place. The clause, and I'm quoting now from a legal analysis done by the Congressional Research Service, serves, quote, principally to protect the independence and integrity of the legislative branch by protecting against executive or judicial intrusions into the protective legislative sphere, but also to bar judicial or executive processes that may constitute a distraction or disruption to a member's representative or legislative role. In other words, the president and the courts have a sworn duty to not interfere with duly elected lawmakers going about their jobs, which today it seems the president did with the foreign government's help, nonetheless. This, this morning, White House Press Secretary uh, Stephanie Grisham called reports that the president had been pushing Netanyahu to bar the two's visit inaccurate, she said. And then shortly after, the president tweeted this, quote, it would show great weakness if Israel allowed Representative Omar and Representative Tlaib to visit. They hate Israel and all Jewish people, and there's nothing that can be done, that can be said or done to change their minds. Minnesota and Michigan will have a hard time putting them back in office. They were a disgrace which is a very public pushing of Netanyahu to bar the two's visit. It's not even secret pushing. And a short time later, the Israeli government, which had apparently been leading against barring the congresswomen, reversed course and did what the president all but taunted Prime Minister Netanyahu to do, which you can argue is action Netanyahu was justified in taking because both congresswomen do support a boycott against Israel and Israel does have an anti-boycott law. And that's what they cited in their decision. But keeping them honest, it's hard to see that as anything more than a fig leaf when the action comes immediately after the president goes online pushing such action. And according to reporting in Axios and the New York Times, he's been at it for some time since at least last week. Again, the president's press secretary called those reports inaccurate as her words, fake news. The president has not said he spoke directly to Netanyahu. And late today, the president also denied leaning on Israel. But then moments later, he seemed to admit he had. So here are the two statements the president said at the same impromptu press conference as he left for his country club for, uh, or as he left his country club to go to New Hampshire for a rally. In your conversations with people connected to Israel, did you encourage them to reject the conversation? No, I don't encourage or discourage. I think that if Israel allowed them to come in for the normal reasons, other than those reasons, I really believe that it would be a terrible thing for Israel. I think it would show a terrible sign. China said Prime Minister Netanyahu about uh, the Congress. I don't want to comment about who I spoke to. 
But uh, I think my social media statement pretty well speaks for itself. I feel that uh, they are so anti-Israel, so anti-Jewish. Again, if other people made that statement, there would have been hell to pay. So, but I did speak to people. Yeah, I don't want to say who I spoke to, but I, I did. I, I spoke to people. So in the space of just a few hours, the President of the United States made potentially unconstitutional demands on the head of a foreign government to do something his press secretary denied he was pushing for and then denied it. He denied it, too, while also possibly or seemingly admitting it, which is kind of an, an achievement without even going into the bipartisan political pushback, the geopolitical complications or the unprecedented historical nature of all of this. And yeah, it's not even Friday.